all the things that show up in life. All the things that come into our lives, all the things that we observe in life. I had the gift of being at a beloved's birthday party just yesterday. It's one of our little babes, Sebastian, who just turned one. I can't even believe that he's already one. But at his birthday party, his mamas did something pretty incredible. Everyone at the birthday party got a little slip of paper, and on that slip of paper was a pre-formatted letter where you filled in the blanks of what you wished and hoped for him. And things like, I hope you smile, dot, dot, dot. I hope you remember, dot, dot, dot. Experience all these different things, which was so beautiful. And one of the questions was, I hope you learn, dot, dot, dot. And I answered that question with this. Sebastian, I hope you learn to look for the good that surrounds you. I hope you learn to look for the good that surrounds you. I think, especially due to his amazing mamas, he will learn that. Perception is powerful. An awareness of the power of perception is life transforming. Before we have this awareness, our power is diminished. Before we have this awareness, it can be natural to believe that we are recipients of our experience rather than co-creators. After we have awareness, our power is multiplied. After we have awareness of the power of our perception how we co-create and what we know about the laws of the universe, the mind and our spiritual condition is multiplied. Through the power of awareness, we're able to ask ourselves and engage ourselves in an inquiry into practicing principles that can realign us with that which we want to have more of. We can ask questions like, is this true? How I'm perceiving something, is it true? Is it objectively true? Or is it true from a pain body, a mindset, a perception that I have somehow inherited, built up, or made an agreement with? And is there another option? Before we're aware of the power of perception, we don't even know there's an option, friends. How am I making the present moment my enemy? That's a question. When we begin to have awareness, we can ask ourselves, how might I be making the present moment my enemy? Even asking ourselves, what am I looking for? What am I gaining from this perspective? What am I getting from it? We can ask ourselves, how am I a mirror of that? Whatever I'm seeing, where is that in me? Whatever I'm judging, where is that in me? We can ask ourselves, when have I felt this before? And trace it back and back and back and back till we get to the age of birth to seven or eight years old to say, where have I felt that before? How long have I been building this feeling? How long has this been familiar? How long has this feeling or this perception or this perspective been gaining evidence in the world around me that it is in fact true? Now this can be a power and this can be a detriment. When we become aware, we can bring in a consciousness that helps us align with that which we're seeking. It allows us the opportunity for inquiry, for contemplation, for even challenge and change. We've all probably heard about the law of attraction, that you're kind of like a magnet, you draw things to you, that through your thoughts, you actually create. And it's often taught in unity 
which is really, it's truly termed the law of mind action. But it's taught in unity sometimes to be this idea of what am I drawing to me? And like anything, if you just bumper sticker something, a spiritual truth, it can miss the mark. It cannot have the depth that is needed when you are a human being and a spiritual being evolving and unfolding and trying to understand how the spiritual universe works. So what about when you're focusing on something and you're trying to step into activating the law of attraction, you're focusing on something and it's not demonstrating. It's not coming to you. We've all had this happen, right? Like I've heard, okay, positive thinking, and if I just think like this and do like this and say like this, it'll come to me. And then what happened? Your hand was empty. Or it didn't happen. Or you've observed around you a whole bunch of people thinking thoughts or saying things, being a magnet for ugly things, and great things happen. <laughs> they don't bless their money. They have no spiritual practice around money. They abuse their bodies, and look, I take care of my body, and look at this is what happened with my body. But that person doesn't do anything that honors their body, and they got this. I'm a good person, and look what happened in my life or in my circumstance or in my family. And someone else may be apparently careless. And those things don't seem to happen to them. One of our unity teachers is well known for making people uncomfortable. He's been an instructor at Unity Institute. He's taught in our movement for a long time now. And he's known for poking people for taking our principles when we do bumper stickers and going, really? Well, how about when this happens? You know, a lot of times people don't like going to the depth of looking at when it doesn't work because it's scary. But Reverend Paul Hasselback loves it. And he's been a gift to our movement in that he can host dialogues and conversations that really just make you go, I don't know what I believe, and let me think about that. Well, I guess, well, ah. And he has some insights into the law of mind action. And I call it that rather than the law of attraction, because if you look at the law of mind and you look at the law of action, that indicates that there is something with my mind and something with action that comes together to co-create. Now the law of attraction and just saying it like that just says I'm a magnet, I attract. What am I attracting, what am I attracting, what am I bringing in? I'm a mighty magnet, good, bad, whatever. But he poses an interesting thought and I'm gonna pose it to us this morning. In the book, Sacred Secrets, which is a compilation of essays from different Unity authors, he loves to go into the hard questions here. He says this. The title of his essay is Attraction or Perception, which? And he says, as we focus on something we want, that something is not attracted to us like a magnet. If, if you've been in unity for a while, that could get <gasps> gasps. Let's do it together, it's not a magnet. <gasps> what? How dare they? Sacrilege. Go, Paul. <laughs> he says, rather our focusing on something alters the way we sort the incoming sensory data. Rather, our focusing on something alters the way we sort our incoming data. We start perceiving our world differently. We actually begin to search out the something we want in our surrounding field of perception. We begin to search it out, he says. Now, principle in scripture says, Ask and you shall receive, all things are given. We live in an abundant universe. It is your Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, fear not. You have what is needed and necessary, it's right there. 
So just think about, try on this idea that then, if these things are true, it is through the awakening of our perception that we begin to see differently. Old school unity folks would always say, see it right to set it right. See it right to set it right. Don't try to set it right and then see it right. You've got to see it right. You've got to see a principle. You've got to see a truth statement. And that activates it. That sets it. You begin to actually work with your mind, body, temple, your mind, action, center. And you begin to shift things. Because there is power in your perception. And all of the statements from the master teacher in scripture about awakening and it's right before you, it's right before your eyes and you don't see it. Our awakening, our perception, our enlightenment is right before our eyes. It's right there within us. It's always surrounding us. But we sometimes miss it, no? Then he gives this example. You decide you want to buy a Volkswagen Beetle. You begin thinking and feeling about owning this car. You visualize yourself driving this car to work, on vacations, or on simple errands. This car, this is the car you know and feel you want. And suddenly, you begin to see Volkswagen Beetles everywhere. But God or the universe, he loves, um, he loves taking down magical thinking. Paul loves that. <laughs> but God or the universe did not magically put more Volkswagen Beetles on the road for you to see. As we might sometimes think. <laughs> I did it. I manifested 1,200 more Volkswagen Beetles in Kansas City. <laughs> I'm making fun of us. I am one of us, so I can do that. What has happened is that you have begun to perceive the world differently. You are sorting the incoming data differently through the power of your perception. You are sorting the incoming data differently through the power of your perception. The Beatles have been there all along in the background of your perceptual field. That's what scripture tells us. The kingdom is there in the background all along, just beyond the veil of our perception. The awakening, the enlightenment, the peace, the love, the intelligence, the connectedness, all of it, the abundance, the ideas, everything needed and necessary to live a centered and peace-filled life has been there and is there all along. He says, now, seemingly by magic, they are everywhere for you to see. And it is not that they have been attracted to you. Rather, you have attracted yourself to them. He goes on to say, the law of attraction is a powerful law, not because things and situations are magically drawn to us, not because there is a power in the universe arranging things for us. It is powerful because it can remind us where the power has always been, right where we are. Right where we are. We attract ourselves to people, situations, and things through beliefs and attitudes and thoughts we hold, both conscious and subconscious. He went on to tell another story about a woman that has dated a variety of alcoholics, that that's her story, is that she always ends up attracting alcoholics. And a man at a party who always attracts codependents. <laughs> and them running into each other yet again, another relationship. And talks about it's not that she's a magnet, it's not that somehow she is just unfortunately magnetized towards situations that are in dire need of healing. It's not that he is always magnetized to, magnetized to people who will enable him and help him stay where he is in a place that's not serving his highest good. It's that they both have perceptual fields that are ingrained in their psyche, in their being, that are comfortable with, 
that recognize, that are drawing them to those situations. The beauty of that is that when we do the inner work, that's when we transform beyond those things. And we begin having a different idea, not that, woe is me, this attraction, I'm just this awful magnet for a bunch of garbage. But we get, begin seeing how is it that my perception leads me to be comfortable with a level that is not aligned with what my spirit, my soul, my source, my highest self knows is available and sees in the world around me and truly deeply wants. And how can I start doing that work? So how about trying on that idea that we have within us a filter, a sifter, a magnifying glass. How can that transform our interactions with the world around us and the world within us? So what about when the law works against us? What about when the law works against us? When spiritual law works against us? Hmm. No one should stop watching or listening now. You gotta stay for the second part. <laughs> it's impossible for the spiritual law to work against us. It's completely impossible. Spiritual law is principle. It'd be like saying gravity is gonna work against me. If I just kept walking, I could say that gravity worked against me. But the truth is, I did not respect the law of gravity and prepare myself for my flight. It's not that the law is attacking me. It's not that it's not working for me. It's not that someone that has wings it worked for, but I don't, and so it didn't work for me. There's no such option as spiritual law not working for us. All things work together for good. But we can use the law against ourselves. We can. We can use the law against ourselves. Sometimes out of ignorance, and sometimes out of just not recognizing we're using it. Not even realizing we're using the law. We can learn how to use our natural operating system to either overcome our hardships or to create more of them. This can be conscious and we can do this unknowingly. Think about one of the most common afflictions of today. It's one of the most common afflictions people have today. It's on the rise. It's made much more readily available by our increasing access to global information, by the use of social media, and by the growing acceptance and appearance of a diverse spectrum of lifestyles, income styles, life choices, paths, variations of all sorts. Many of us have this to varying degrees. FOMO, have you heard of it? Some of you have heard of it. Fear of missing out. FOMO, fear of missing out. Today's culture is primed to encourage our fear of missing out. I can't even go to the grocery store. People hate going to the grocery store with me and probably my sisters as well because we will sit there. I've heard that there are other places where it's like there's three things of toothpaste to choose from. But not at our grocery stores. There's like 20,000. <laughs> and I will sit there going like, well, I don't know if the whitening is, that's not good. The dentist said, then that can hurt your teeth. But then I want the this, but then that. And then that kind is, the, that, that one's the gel, and that one's the paste, and that one's the, mm -mm -mm. and I will literally, like, I got to be in a good mood to go. I got to be in a. Because what if? What if? If anyone's done home improvements, you know what I'm talking about. Well, but did I want the cloth foot tub or should it be the corner tub? But, but then if I want that, then, uh, and then right after you get something done, it's like, oh, well, that, that was the one. I didn't know that one was out there. <laughs> People do it with relationships all the time. I'm pretty happy, but I never knew if, you know, what, 
might be out there. I remember one of my greatest fears with my 10-year boyfriend. I had a little sweetheart from junior high through college, and I just always had this nagging, which there were deeper spiritual things going on and other unfoldments later, but I always had this nagging and this fear like, I mean, we're so happy and it's so good together, but what if? Like, I don't know what was out there. What if? I've since found out what's out there. No, just kidding. (laughs) 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 That's next week's talk. No, that's never a talk. (laughs) It's a Guinness and God session. Just kidding. There are always opportunities to look at what we're missing. If you take the first relationship that comes along because it's beautiful, you miss out on the variety of experiences you have from learning about the depths of intimacy with a variety of people. If you don't do that, you miss out on the possibility of knowing the depth that can come from having a 50-year marriage. I don't even think it would be physically possible for me to have a 50-year marriage at this point. Maybe. If you start your family young, you may feel like you missed out on a career or opportunities or things that other people got to do when you watched them do it. And if you started it late, you may have missed your chance at all, or you may sit there going, now it's going to look like this, and I never thought any of it was going to look like that. And then take into account all of the unexpecteds that you can't even choose. Fear of missing out can create paralysis. Not only that, it's not aligned with principle. Because the truth of principle is that we have what is ours. We have what comes to us and what comes through us. And that is by divine appointment. And if we can look at that deeply enough, I dare to say, we probably wouldn't change a bit of it. In the present moment, Tuning into the present moment, if we could stay in that awareness, not in the past, not in the future, but if we could stay in the awareness of the present moment, recognizing that life will always change, there will always be change, it is inevitable. It is inevitable. How can I live in this place where I'm always looking at what I'm missing out on, what would have been, what could have been, what might have been? Even the song that we heard this Sunday starting out, of looking at the things in life, you know, the hardships that people go through and saying, let it go, everything is someone else, like whatever is someone else's is theirs. Have you noticed in the human condition how we want the good things other people have? We're like, I just look at that relationship. Man, look at that income and that job. Look at that freedom, look at how they've traveled, look at how they have their roots here, look at all the family, look at this, look at that, look at the health. But we don't go back and say, look at all the hardships. I want those too. Look at the struggles. Look at what developed that character. Look at what created that human being. We don't always want to sign on for all that. The truth is when we make comparisons, even to our past and our own future, we're simply diminishing our power. We're simply creating states of mind that can be toxic to our own well-being because they are based in faulty principles. They are based in ideas of lack. They're rooted in some idea or belief that something has the power to keep me from my good. Something can keep me from my good. Or that somehow there's some other good demonstrated out there and I could just pick and choose and just cut out the little piece that I want without the whole consciousness of the whole package that created the soul and the depth and the life path that led to where someone is 
or what someone's experiencing. More than ever, friends, we have the chance to see the variety of options on how we can live this life. The question for us is, are we going to use those to crucify ourselves, or are we going to use them for our freedom and our emancipation and help us to help us to see, ah, that's my path. Ah, that's the option I want to take. Ah, that's the good I'm ready for. The choice is ours. If you're going to miss out on something, let it be fear. Namaste.